this video, I'm going to introduce some very important vocabulary terms for the rest of the unit. So you might want to make sure that, that finishing this video, you can define a lot of these terms that we're going to use in the discussion of future concepts. So let's start with DNA gene and chromosome, something we introduced in the previous unit too. We remember uh, DNA, especially in the molecular genetics unit, was the chemical um, where certain combinations of nitrogen bases coded for particular amino acids that made up proteins. We're not gonna focus on as much on the DNA chemical in this unit. We're more interested in the overall sequence of all of those nitrogen bases in a particular region called a gene that coded for a particular protein that maybe influenced a particular trait. We're really interested in how genes are passed from parents to offspring. So we also need to study the overall chromosomes. Chromosomes um, are the entire piece of DNA um, continuously tied together. And chromosomes might contain thousands of genes in particular locations. So if we really want to study how genes are passed from parents to their children, we really need to study how chromosomes are passed and how they move in cells. So um, let's talk about different types of cells and some chromosome terms. There are two basic types of cells we're going to discuss here. There are either somatic cells that make up your body, so um, anything that's not a sperm or an egg cell would be a somatic cell for our purpose. Skin cell, brain cell, stomach cell, etc. would all be somatic cells. And then there are sperm and egg cells, and we can kind of refer to them both as gametes. So you would make a particular type of gamete depending on whether you're a male or a female. Male makes sperm, females make egg. Um, and let's talk about um, some a really important difference between those two types of cells. Somatic cells in our bodies are all diploid. And um, diploid refers to how many chromosomes um, um, are in these cells. And di means two. So that means that you have two of each chromosome in your somatic cells. So for example, two of these red uh, chromosomes, and we call these guys homologous pairs. We'll see that uh, homo is a root word for the same. So in, in, in this uh, particular context, uh, homologous means that they have the same genes. So both of these guys carry the R gene, and we'll talk in just a minute about why I made one of them uppercase and one of them lowercase. In some other cases, you might have the exact same version of a gene. Um, so um, you have homologous pairs in your diploid cells. A, uh, uh, an abbreviation we often use for diploid is 2N, and sometimes different species have different numbers of chromosomes, so we want to indicate, all right, we're talking about a species where the diploid number is 4. Usually when we report that, we mean 4 total. Um, so two ways you can think about that for that type of cell is there's, there's either 4 total chromosomes that I can count here, or 2 pairs. Uh, you know, so think of this as like your shoes. You can either say you have four total shoes or you have two pairs of shoes, let's say. All right, and so gametes, on the other hand, are haploid. Haploid cells have half the number of chromosomes that diploid cells have, or one of each. They don't have pairs. So if the diploid number for this species was four, the haploid number, or just single N, there's kind of an understood one here, um, is two. Two total chromosomes, no pairs in haploid cells. Okay, so let's um, just kind of uh, think about our own cells as an example. If I were to take one of my skin cells and um, open up the nucleus and kind of pull out each little um, hair-like strand of DNA, I could pull out 46 different hairs, or 46 different chromosomes total. They come in pairs, so 23 pairs. Uh, most of the chromosome pairs we just refer to by number, um, and, and something that, that males and females all have are 22 of the 23 pairs in their body cells. So um, different chromosomes are important because each chromosome pair carries different genes in them. Um, and so again, we just refer to the first 22 pairs that all of us, male and female, have the same as autosomes, and the 23rd pair is what makes us male or female. Um, so there is a chromosomal difference in every single body cell of our body. Uh, males will have an X and a Y um, a pair of sex chromosomes. Um, so this is actually showing a, a chromosomal male here. Um, they actually carry slightly different genes, but we still consider them homologous pairs. And um, 
females would be X and X. So if you just had two larger X chromosomes in this picture, you would, you would show a female. All right, so now that we've done some basic chromosome vocabulary, let's do some gene vocabulary. So maybe this little hash here represents um, that this, this particular gene is in this part of the overall chromosome. Um, and maybe this gene helps determine the shape of seeds in a certain plant. So maybe this organism actually has two different versions of that gene. And that's what we're doing with the uppercase and lowercase. If the gene is like the, the overall category, um, seed shape, then we, we call the different possibilities for that gene alleles. Um, in, in simple genetics, we'll see that there are often two versions or two alleles for every gene, um, and maybe one of them dominates the other, and so we usually use the uppercase letter for the dominant version of the uh, allele, and a lowercase letter for the recessive allele. What make alleles actually different is that maybe there are just slightly different, slight differences in the DNA coding for that gene that maybe make a slightly different protein and that protein does slightly different activities and that's what leads to um, perhaps a difference that we can see. Now, when we think about what an organism actually shows, we have to consider both of the alleles they have on that organism's homologous pairs. So let's say an organism is, uh, has both capital R's, um, then it's pretty easy to imagine that what we're gonna see is a plant that makes round shaped seeds. But as it turns out, um, so would an organism that has both a big R and a little r on its other chromosome um, because the capital R dominates. If you just have one version of that gene, if you have that dominant allele, then we are going to see the round shape result. And so we call that concept of what we can actually see, the result of your two alleles is the phenotype of the organism. Sometimes I try to um, have students think about phenotype as the physical appearance. Um, so maybe thinking of those two pH words together. It's what we can actually see. And so these two organisms would actually have the same phenotype, but they would have different genotypes. Um, this first organism up here with um, both dominant alleles, we would call homozygous dominant. Homo means the same and it is the same with two dominant or two uppercase alleles, that would be its actual gene combinations or its two alleles, and so we call that its genotype. Whereas this organism down here with one capital and one lowercase allele, we would call heterozygous. Hetero means other, um, and so they have one and the other um, for their two alleles. One uppercase, one lowercase. So different genotypes, but same phenotype. Genotype, what are your actual alleles? Phenotype, um, what, is, what does that actually look like? What is the result of having those alleles? So how could you actually have a plant that shows having wrinkled seeds? Well, it would need both lowercase alleles. It would need to be, um, that would be the phenotype. Wrinkled shape would be the physical result that we see. And it would need to have a homozygous recessive genotype to um, actually show that phenotype. So again, homo means the same. It has the same alleles. In this case, they're both lowercase or both recessive in order to result in that appearance. All right, so in this video, we just tried to introduce some basic terms like homologous pairs, some gene terms, and some, chroma, uh, uh, some terms like genotype and phenotype.